Hi everyone! This video will be about how I'll make this Cotman palette work for me. So since I've been accumulating more and more art supplies since getting back into art several years ago, space is being taken up and I feel like there's a good portion of supplies that I don't necessarily love but still keep for whatever reason. Like this Windsor & Newton Cotman Skechers box. I'm sure a lot of you recognize this set. I bought this set even before I started this channel, and the reason you've never seen me use it is because I just feel like they're really hard to re-wet, and the pigment load just isn't as strong as I'd like. But I've kept it all these years because I love the palette box itself, and it has a memory attached to it. However, instead of loving it, Every time I look at it, I feel sad because while I love the box, I just don't use it at all because of the paints inside. So I think it's time I'm finally able to say goodbye to the Cotman paints inside. I'll be putting these into my giveaway box to give away or donate later on like how I did last year. I decided to fill this up with Van Gogh watercolors because Van Gogh is one of those paints where I don't feel like they're too precious for me to use, unlike Daniel Smith or other artist grade watercolors. While I do have my Sonnet slash White Knights palette that I also feel aren't too precious, the size is sometimes too clunky for a quick sketch. Since I already have a good selection of Van Gogh watercolors, and also know what my most used colors are, it wasn't too difficult to pick just 12. Would I have liked more? Sure, but that's not the point for today. I like my palettes in rainbow order, starting with magenta, so the first color here is permanent red violet made with PV19. It actually looks a lot like PR122, and not at all dark like your typical PV19 beta. I'll link a comparison video I posted last year where I compared this Van Gogh color to other artist grade Quinn Magentas. Next is Carmine made with PR176. This one isn't necessarily dark, but it is a pretty deep red that has a blue undertone, which I love because it washes down to a pinkish red. And then for my yellow, I would have picked a nickel azo yellow, but Van Gogh doesn't offer that, so the next best thing is this transparent medium yellow made with PY128. Then we have sap green that is surprisingly made with PG7 and PY129. I normally have a sap green in my other palettes anyway, so this was an easy pick. Next is PG7, that's phthalo green blue shade. I rarely use this color on its own, but as many painters have pointed out, it is a great mixer color. And then I have here, probably the lowest tinting color in this palette, turquoise green. Again, I posted a video about this before, link in the description box below. I just love this color for what it is. It's like a low tinting version of a cobalt turquoise. And then there's turquoise blue made with PV15 and PG7 which for me is essentially a substitute for my beloved Thalo Turquoise PB16. Moving on, we have Cerulean Blue, which is a hue made with PB15 and PW6, which is typical for student-grade watercolors not to have genuine Cerulean Blue made with PB35 or 36, but I do tend to use PB35 a lot, especially when painting skies, so I wanted to make sure I had a color that resembled that in this palette. And then Ultramarine Blue made with PB29. Personally, I don't really like this one because it doesn't granulate, of course. I've seen some people say though that theirs does granulate, so I wonder if it's maybe a difference between which lot you get, like, you know, how um, paints are being manufactured lot by lot, so yeah, who knows. Alright, we're on to the last three. This here is Raw Sienna made with PY42. Normally, I'd use a transparent yellow oxide in my main palette, so for Van Gogh, it would have been either yellow ochre or this raw sienna. Yellow ochre is sometimes too opaque for me personally, so I went with raw sienna instead. Here's light oxide red, PR101. This one is definitely too opaque for my preference, but I wanted a red earth in this palette that was easy to re-wet. 
I do have both burnt sienna and burnt umber from Van Gogh, but they're a lot harder to reactivate. Last but not least is oxide black made with PBK11. I just love the granulation texture it produces, so this was a must for my palette. And there you have it, 12 Van Gogh watercolors in my little Skechers box by Windsor & Newton. This is definitely a palette I could see myself grabbing and actually using, guilt-free without thinking about whether I'd be wasting precious artist-grade paints or not. So what do you guys think? Do you like what I've done here? Or are you maybe like the other part of me that feels like a Winsor & Newton palette should not be filled with any other brand of paint other than Winsor & Newton itself? I know, like, I definitely have mixed feelings, but I think overall I really like how this turned out. It's a lot better than having the whole set in a box untouched for years and years. Don't you agree? Well, that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.